but following breaking news, an arrest made in a deadly explosion in Medley. And Eden Jekyll is in our newsroom now with more on this. Christy Louie, right now a man is facing charges for the fiery blast that killed two business owners. It was late February when crews responded to an explosion at this welding facility on Northwest South River Drive in Medley. Two men died at the scene and two others were seriously hurt. 59-year-old Elias Gross and his business partner, 53-year-old Vincent Williams, were killed. Family members told us they had taken their fueling truck to the facility. Detectives say the circumstances of the blast rose to the level of culpable negligence. Jean-Paul Loris was arrested and is now charged with manslaughter. Louie? All right, Eden, thank you. A couple of crooks made a major mess when they broke into a fast food restaurant. And they used crowbars to pry open the back door, but then they couldn't crack the safe. We'll give you a closer look at them all new at six. Stunning video of the fight for survival as a pod of orcas goes after two gray whales. Plus intense body cam video of a deadly police shooting that officer firing on a teenager in a stolen car who just wouldn't stop. But first, a live look outside our weather cameras right now. Blustery, gray, cloudy days. There's some wet weather on the way in time for Easter. Uh-oh, we have your holiday forecast next with Betty. Shining the spotlight on the leading ladies of Local 10 News. Celebrating their diversity, their strength, their professionalism, their compassion. Shining the spotlight on the leading ladies of Local 10 News. Celebrating their diversity, their strength, their professionalism, their compassion, their integrity.
Body cam video has now been released from a deadly police shooting of a 17 year old in Washington, D.C. This happened last month. Police say Delanio Martin took off in a stolen car with an officer in that car. He told Martin to stop or he'd shoot. I have to warn you, though, the video is pretty graphic. Stop! Stop, man, just let me out. Let me out! Stop! Stop, bro, shoot! So police tell us they found Martin sound asleep inside that stolen car. When they opened the door and woke him up, he tried to drive away with the officer in the back seat. When Martin didn't stop that car, that officer says he was forced to fire his weapon. The car ended up hitting a house, and that's where Martin died. An attorney for the family told the Washington Post they're hoping that officer who shot Martin will be identified soon prosecuted and fired. We're seeing dramatic video of a pod of orcas attacking two gray whales in Monterey Bay. And we have to warn you, this video is pretty graphic too. A group of whale watchers heard what was happening and sent up a drone to record the whole thing. More than 30 orcas, look at that, went after those whales in a well-coordinated attack. Killer whales are, of course, very complex animals. It's hard to attribute any of their actions to any one thing. However, when you think about them feeding on adult gray whales early in the season, something they wouldn't normally do, it could point to a lack of other food availability. If they're normally going after seals, sea lions, and dolphins during this time of year, if they aren't, instead they're targeting adult gray whales, which is definitely something that's harder to do, something harder to take down, something as big as an adult gray whale. Well, that is the impact that humans are having on the ocean. The attack lasted six hours before the gray whales split up and escaped the shallower waters. I mean, we have to wonder with, you know, our oceans being overfished and us, you know, right. creating an imbalance in the marine ecosystem, That's things like a, this are going to happen. Yeah, so. having a domino effect for sure. Mm -hmm. Wow, incredible video. All right, let's take a peek outside right now from our Mount Sinai Medical Center Tower Camp. It's a little gloomy looking out there right now, Betty. It, it is a thing, a uh, sign of things to come, Betty. We may have a sprinkle in the drops in the uh, backdrop for now. Mm -hmm. And then later this weekend, we could have more than just sprinkles happening across our area. So stay there so I can show you the seven day planner in a minute or so. For now, we're focused on the temperatures, which we're running above average. We expected this to happen. We hit 87 officially for the high today in Miami and Kendall, too. Now we have mid 80s and east-southeast winds going, and it's this east-southeasterly wind flow that's pushing some of the showers developing over the Atlantic waters straight toward the shoreline. So let's zoom in and see exactly where the showers are managing to hold together. Uh, not much happening for now over Miami Gardens, although earlier we did have a little shower to run by North Miami as well, but it's down around the Upper Keys and uh, downtown Miami, where we are going to keep an eye glued. There's one little shower right there. If that one comes in, it's probably going to come in oh, near Virginia Key. And if it holds together around uh, downtown Miami, but it may just shrivel up. So the rainfall is not going to amount to much, though we are managing to get just a little bit, just as we see these showers coming in for parts of the upper keys. So there will be that chance for a stray shower in the forecast tonight. East southeast winds continue. Uh, low temperatures we're expecting mid 70s. Colder air pushing out through the middle of the country. Yes, you see the 20s currently in the upper Midwest and then some 60s through the mid south. So there's a cold front on the move, a cold front that is producing some strong to severe storms for parts of the country, but not here. We've got a ridge of high pressure holding on, not to mention on the water vapor imagery, noticing still a touch of dry air in the atmosphere over us in the mid levels. But this ridge hangs on long enough to give us a work week. That's pretty nice. And then finally for the weekend, we get a break in the ridge. Jet stream takes a subtle dip over the east, allowing a weak front to come close to Florida. That front's ultimately going to stall, but it will be the shift that we're talking about to bring us the better chance for rainfall come Easter Sunday. Make sure you've got the local 10 weather app to track the rain as it gets going. Christy. OK, sounds good. Thank you, Betty. Well, April, of course, is Earth Month, and we can think of really no better way to honor our planet than to sit down with the conservation legend and UN messenger of peace, Dr. Jane Goodall. Dr. Goodall was just in Miami giving a lecture at FIU, inspiring hope through action. But before she took the stage, she spoke with me about how South Florida must step up and do its part to save our natural world. Here's tonight's Don't Trash Our Treasure. <laughs> I climbed into the hills. This was where I was meant to be. You really have lived a most extraordinary life. Yes. 
I have. I totally. She was just 23 years old. British-born Jane Goodall arrived in Africa for the first time in 1960 for an adventure that would consume her entire life. If you could go back and speak to that 23-year-old, what would you say to her? Oh, I'd just say, just do what your heart tells you to do. Carry on and don't stop. And she hasn't let up since, sending science into a tailspin in 1962 when in the forest of Gombe in Tanzania, Goodall became the first to observe wild chimpanzees making tools from twigs to get food. Did you know what an earth-shattering moment you just witnessed? No, of course not. But I wasn't <clears throat> surprised to see the chimps using tools. But I did know that science believed that we were the only tool-using creatures. And you disrupted that. So I disrupted that. No, the chimps did. The chimps did. <laughs> Wasn't me. Yeah. Goodall's groundbreaking research changed the way the world looked at the animal kingdom. Humans, not the only species that showed emotion. So I was able to gradually persuade scientists that we were not the only sentient, sapient beings. And she's been fighting for nature and all species ever since, traveling the globe 300 days a year on a mission to protect and restore balance to our planet. How do you do that? Where do you get the energy? You know, it's two things really. I get energized by the audiences, but then how I do it is because I must. I've been given certain gifts and I better jolly well use them. Dr. Jane Goodall. And she uses those gifts every day. In South Florida Friday, she addressed a sold out crowd of 3,400 at FIU who came to be inspired by this champion of conservation. She welcomed them with a chimpanzee greeting. But her message was serious and urgent. What people have to understand is we are actually part of the natural world and we depend on it for food, for water, for the air we breathe. And this is what we're destroying. And that means if we carry on doing that, we will destroy ourselves. Goodall believes we still have time to slow down climate change and stop the massive loss of biodiversity. It is the youth who give her the most hope. It's the young people, once they understand the problems and we empower them to take action. The resilience of nature, give nature a chance and she'll come back to places we destroyed. Animals on the brink can be given another chance and hopefully your Florida panther will have another chance because people are working to say, no, we're not going to let this beautiful creature vanish. Conservation is at the core of Roots and Shoots, a global program Goodall created for kids from preschool to university that engages them to find solutions to create a better world. It's now in 68 countries and counting. Its message is every one of us makes an impact every day, and we have a choice. And they are becoming champions of the environment. And because we began in 91, we have them out in the big wide world, and they hang on. The main values, respect, respect for each other, for nature, for the environment, and compassion. Goodall's light is leading the way. She turned 89 Monday and has no plans to slow down. What is your birthday wish? So I always say, if you want to reach the moon, you've got to aim for the stars. So I aim for the stars and say, I want Roots and Shoots program in every country. We'll make that happen. Happy birthday. Thank you. An extraordinary woman. Right now, there is no Roots and Shoots program in South Florida, but one is in the works. Watch this space. I'll keep you posted. And meanwhile, Dr. Goodall is challenging all of us to start with one thing. Find the one thing that you can do every day to help our planet, whether it's a beach cleanup or stop using plastic or reducing your carbon footprint. There's something we can all do every day. For more info on the Jane Goodall Institute and tips on what you can do to show love for our Mother Earth, scan that QR code. It'll take you straight to the Don't Trash Our Treasure section on local10.com. Wow. Wow. Lucky you, I know. you got to sit down and talk to her. <laughs> I know. The crazy thing was that she was 23 years old. She didn't even have a college education. Mm -hmm. She went there with no, not knowing anything and right. just fell into it. And just that just created her destiny, I her mean, path. Yeah. And she a, hasn't I, stopped ever what since. A what a path. What a path, what a path indeed. Opened the world's our, a better place because of her. Yeah, yeah, of course. Oh, wow. So still ahead right here. A firefighter making a disturbing discovery at a fire station. Someone was reporting everyone in the bathroom. A South Florida dairy company getting squeezed by a gang of drivers and other employees who were skimming plenty off those trucks. 
But first, we're going to show you some of the amazing works of art students are making from trash for our Earth Day art contest. That's a look at this comes right back. Never miss a beat with Local 10 Plus. And it's right here in our own backyard. A one-stop shop for all your news. North Rock Island Road has since reopened. From traffic updates and weather alerts to cooking, home projects, health, H2O, and politics. Defining moment for the governor. We've got you covered anytime, anywhere. Local 10 is right there with you on the scene of breaking news, in the stands at sporting events, and exploring SoFlo's hidden gems. Stream at home or on the go, 24 hours a day, only on Local 10 Plus. Shining the spotlight on the leading ladies of Local 10 News. Celebrating their diversity, their strength, their professionalism, their compassion. Well, the Local 10 Earth Day Art Contest has taken flight. The artworks of the 10 finalists are being displayed right now at Terminal 3 at Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport. Tens of thousands of travelers pass through every day, which can translate into votes for those finalists. The school with the artwork that receives the most votes wins the contest and $4,500. Passengers are really impressed with what they're seeing so far, too. They see it from a distance, and when they come up closer to see what it's about, they're just amazed about um, um, uh, how the artwork is created because it's it's made with all of these uh, discarded objects such as cardboard boxes, palm fronds, plastic bottles, and it, they think it's beautiful. Even one passenger offered to purchase one of the artworks. That is amazing. You have until April 30th to view the exhibit at the airport, but if you want to vote for your favorite piece, you only have until April 9th. Talk is kicking. Go to local10.com and click on the contest page to make your vote count. The winning school will be announced on Earth Day, April 27th. Well, 22nd, actually. That'll do it for us at 5.30. Time now for the news at 6. Developing now, a stunning scheme caught on camera. Crooks allegedly stealing and then selling milk. The heist happening at this landmark MacArthur dairy plant. 
I'm Ian Margo with how the crooks were skimming the milk without anyone knowing. A day after the arrest and arraignment of former President Trump, new details about the bombshell indictment. Fast food heist, but this drive through caper was a flop. Sudden ambush, the growing crime scene after a point-blank shooting. Disturbing discovery inside a packed firehouse why police are investigating. I in the sky no more. I'm Christina Vasquez with why the governor grounded these drones and why it's causing concern about public safety. The news starts right now. Off the top at six tonight, a stunning scheme stopped. The suspects busted after they were caught on camera stealing and selling milk. And cops say the crook skimmed more than one million dollars worth of milk from a famed local dairy. Local 10's Ian Margul is live now in Miami with our top story. Ian. Apparently, these guys are doing a whole lot more than just skimming off the top. And police say when several of them got caught, they spilled all the details. This is video from an undercover investigation into a ring of thieves who police say stole more than a million dollars from MacArthur Dairy and Island Dairy distributors in just a year and a half. Investigators tell us starting in October of 2021, Oslevi Rodriguez, who works as a dispatcher for Island Dairy Distributors, allegedly began tampering with orders, having extra crates of MacArthur milk put onto trucks being driven by Eduardo Alvarez Marrero, Johanny Padron, and Michael Rodriguez. Once they were loaded up, the three drivers started making their normal daily deliveries, but then they would divert to a predetermined location to meet with Ihosvani Lopez and Jose Fayayera, who would be waiting with their own truck to offload the extra crates. Apparently, Lopez would buy the extra milk at 10 bucks per crate and then resell them for 11 to 12 dollars and give Fayayera a cut of the profits. In total, we're told the group stole more than $925,000 worth of milk and about $350,000 worth of crates, meaning they ripped off MacArthur Dairy and Island Dairy distributors for nearly 1.3 million bucks before getting busted in March. And apparently when the dairies realized there was something going on, they did their own internal investigation and then they went to Miami-Dade police. And Miami-Dade police says it only took them a matter of hours to get that tip and then get that undercover video you just watched in that piece. All six men now facing several felony charges. We'll keep you posted with any updates. Live in Miami, I'm Ian Margul, Local 10 News.